to run us right out. The 59 Impala is right here behind me, winner of the Slonaker Award at the Grand National Royster Show. We're going to have a look at the car, but before that, let's have a chat with the builder, Steve Cooks. Steve, get over here. How are you going? I'm doing good. Congratulations. Thank you. This is beautiful. I hope so. We put a lot of effort into it. A lot of people think so. Well, cool. Absolutely loving the Impala. Now, Steve Cook Creations. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been doing this for? That's a pretty good question. I want to say 25, 27 years, maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. And what got you started? Well, I started painting helmets and stuff when I raced motorcycles and just always liked being around paint. I grew up with the dragster, front ends and dragsters and stuff and seeing all the paint jobs and, and that just really inspired me. I like colors and textures and, and uh, I don't know, I think that's where Dave and I connect maybe. He remodels things and does different things and I, you know, I, I could work on a house and be happy too, I, but I, I just like... I really enjoy how things come together and seeing things finished and, and it's, it's, it just works for me I guess. And seeing the end product of your work. Yeah, it's nice to finish one every once in a while. We're going to have David come and join us soon as well and find out a little bit about him because the Impala is just so stunning, it's drawn so much attention. We want to find out what was more involved in the build, the thought processes, as well as go through the car. Now, before the Impala, is there any other build that really took you by surprise or left a mark with you? Well, I think all of them do a little bit. I think this, I've said this car is a combination of a lot of things that I've done prior that you kind of use. People wonder where you get all your ideals. Most of the time, you you never get them. We don't. We didn't get to use all the ones I wanted to use. Poor Dave had. Okay. You leave a lot on the table. So there's always another car, and I think that uh, you know it. Yeah, we're always building layers and layers and bricks after brick, you know, and and I think that's part of what, as a builder, you bring to the owner is showing them the ropes, where we want to go, what we want to do, stuff we almost take for granted, but I think it's a process, and it's also a, a fun ride to go and see, see their experience and how they see it. And uh, what they're taking. And see the on. reactions, yes. absolutely. Yes. Steve, you mentioned bike riding. Has that influenced you as a hot rod builder? Well, it, it just teaches you to do your own thing and kind of, like I said, living true to your own lane, you know. To, um, you know, just to have a little bit of confidence. I think that's why my parents got me into that. Try to get, pick up some confidence, you know. I think I, I've always struggled with that, maybe. I, I don't really think about it much, but also, I think I work it more internally. I don't think I have any sort of confidence. I just have a hard time showing people that. So, this is the best I can do at that. And you've done it very well. Well, I, you know, I... You've come up with a bang. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's absolutely beautiful. You know what, David is here as well. David, step and we're going to do our best to have a chat with that music and I'll do my best to edit it out. David, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yep. Um, tell me now, so this is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, what did you give to Steve and how long ago before it was finished? So Steve's had it for about seven years. Okay. But that's not all Steve. I mean, some of that falls on budget. So, you know, that's on me. But uh, um, we got the car in 16, and we, we just got it finished here a few weeks ago. And what did he get, exactly? So I said... What did he get? What, what was the condition of the car? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, uh, the car was... Um, uh, you know, it was it was an original car with a little bit of rust here and there. Uh, when I say original, it wasn't restored. It was a original, original oh, survivor. It's an original '59. Yep. Survivor. Interior was in it, but it was it was ripped. You know, it was the uh, the paint was still original. All right. Well, the question now where is where on earth did you find this? <laughs> I found it on eBay after a two year search, and um, the. Uh, you know, I got the family history. In fact, I'm still in touch with the family that had the car. And um, 
deal. They're excited to see it. They were trying to make it to Pomona. Um, they're they're going to try to make it to either uh, SEMA or uh, to uh, Scottsdale because they live in Prescott. The yeah. car was a Nebraska car. Okay. The grandson had um, uh, moved his family to Prescott. And I'm assuming when the grandparents passed away, he inherited the car. And uh, they, he couldn't get it. It wasn't running. It had been stored for 30 years by the time he had it. And, uh, you know, he couldn't make it run. He had a young family, couldn't afford to make it run. So that's why he decided to sell it. It was, I could tell it was a hard decision for him to do it. So that's why I made sure, you know, honor that. And I've kept in touch with him and his, now his mother. Wow. Which was, who learned to drive in this car? <laughs> I absolutely love that, everybody. Honestly, you went ahead and you could have just taken the car, but you wanted to get to know the owners, yes. to find a little bit of their history as well. Why the Impala? You were looking for it for two years. What is the connection there? Uh, there really, really is a connection. I wish I could say I have this great story that, you know, somebody in my history had an Impala or whatever. I just happened to be at a car show and I saw, I was just, and I'd seen it before, but I walked behind it and I saw that trunk and I said, that is amazing. And so I just kind of took a moment at that time. This was in Texas, the Texas Motor Speedway, the good guy show. I slid around the side and started really evaluating the car. I realized the lines in this thing were just amazing. And uh, and so that was the decision. I decided I wanted one of these and I started searching. And uh, they're not hard, to, they're not easy to come by. Absolutely, and that's a good a reason as anything else. Exactly. Because it is a beautiful car, and, yeah. the, and the lines are just magnificent. Yeah. And Steve, you've done so well to honor that. I think so. Device. That was our goal. You know, we, we we really couldn't improve the car. We could just kind of take what maybe they had to take off the table when they when when they decided when Holly Earl the team decided this is what they wanted to just go for it. You know, and I felt like everybody has some restraints. You know price point and all that stuff that, that this is more probably what they were thinking when they built the car we're going to have a good look in detail with Steve now as the owner we've got the builder and of course the question is what input did you give to Steve and was there any back and forth <laughs> oh there was yeah there was plenty of back and forth um, you know I don't think we have uh, it was always discussions um, and we both were open-minded to each other um, he, he would tell me what he wants to do, and I'd say, oh, I don't know about that. And I'd go home and sleep on it, and, you know, usually I'd come back and say, okay, well, we could do that if we do this, yeah. you know, or, hey, I like that idea now. And, and uh, but uh, some of the main keys for me was uh, the interior was kind of my, okay. I discovered something I saw, and I said, that's, that's what you I You were set on, this is the type of that, interiors I want. So Steve had to work around that interior, because that was decided, you know, very, very early. Yeah. Um, you know, the final color of the car was ultimately Steve, but I'm the one that picked green initially. Okay. It just got into a different green that I initially had planned. It is a very different green, and we will have a chat about it. Let's have a look at the car. We all want to know. We want to see exactly what's happened, what's been customized, what's been kept original. So, Steve, let's go ahead and have a look. David, before I let you go, what is your plans with the car? Uh, to show it for this next year, um, you know, hard and heavy, and uh, after that, I, I hope to drive it some. I mean, I don't know that I'm running down the interstates with it, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, I can see trailing to you know, a, a car show somewhere and unloading it and driving around town and, and enjoying the car. So, Good for you. Yep, that's the plan. Absolutely love it. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We're going to continue on here, but before we move on, Steve, the interiors are absolutely beautiful. One of the first things that I said to David is the seats. When I first sat down, I got a feeling and you know, it's, I'm going to try and express everything that I go through here on the channel and share it with you lot. I sat there and I kind of felt cool in a way, <laughs> can I say that? Cool, but kind of slanted back and I asked David, is this how they were in 59? Tell me about the seats. Well, they're not the seats that came with the car, obviously. They're not. And they're Savelle seats, 66, I think, Savelle. But we recessed the floor. We had to rebuild the whole floor pan because we wanted to... How you fit in a car is as important as how it sounds or looks. That's part of the feel and the, the interaction you get with a car. So that's stuff that I think anybody that's looking at a design of a car is missing if they don't pick up on all that but it, it takes a lot of work to really on some cars to really make that happen you said you rebuilt the entire floor pretty much I mean some of it I mean it's hard 
hard for me to even remember where we stopped and started, but how how start did the how did the floor help with the seating and that stance that you get when you sit in it? Because we recessed it to make sure you had plenty of headroom. I really work on getting your eye in a certain place in the windshield, and you know I've. I've sat in really beautiful cars that just felt uncomfortable. And okay. That's that, you just can't. That's you can't get over that. And it's just also the way. I mean, this is just well, it's sitting of, on the floor for starters. Well, it's recessed into the floor. It's recessed into the floor. Yes. Thank you. And also, just the way it's coming together down here, it's very comfortable. Yeah, that's you know that's got everything to do with Gabe and his his eye and what he knows from his experience of 30 years or so. Uh, we just turn a lot of we. We do a concept drawing. Alan does all the drawings, and but it's really just a, a direction, and we just kind of leave a lot of that in his. I've worked with him on quite a few cars. He and I, I feel like we really connect without without even saying much. He, know, he knows the direction you're going yeah. because he never sees this car finished because I do the interiors during the middle of the prop, almost at, about when I'm in primer because I want to get it all done and get it out of the way. So when he sees the car for the first time, he, he said this interior he thought was going to be a little bit too bold. That he was he was just I, I can't even express, but he was just excited because he said these this color really this is really orangey when yep. you take it out away from the car. If you see the car in primer, but it this brings more brown out in it. This earth tone colors that we have in it. It's bold. But it works yeah. because it's got such an aggressive stance. It has everything stance. to do with the colors on the outside. That was one of David's things about having the contrasting colors on the inside. And um, we look at it as more of a shadow. A shadow. Part, yeah. Okay. They 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 kind of did some things, and Gabe was kind of trying to pick our mind. He didn't understand why we wanted to do what we we're doing. <laughs> Say like the armrest would have been a, the dark brown, and why well, just we just decided that the easiest way to explain it was. That's just a drop shade on it. Drop shade on it. Yeah. I love that. No, let's go back here, sir. The interiors is always the last thing. That's what I'm learning. The interiors you do last, but you did it midway through the project. Yes. I think it, it gives me an opportunity. I feel like most of our cars are more organic, and it gives us a lot of opportunity to, to make some. We make these seal plates. Those are just on the fly. And but it gives us opportunities to do what's best for the car. I often say that I'm probably the only voice this car is ever going to have, and and it's so important to get that right. Absolutely. Let's go to the front, sir. Okay. Let's go to the front and all right. It's absolutely iconic Impala. Yes. Talk to me if there has been any modifications you've done here. At For the sure, the headlight, the headlight bezels yeah. didn't look like this at all. They didn't look like an extension of the body, so we, Alan found some guys that made headlight bezels, but we cut them in half and built the pieces to go around them. We've narrowed the bumpers up. We, the crossover, we moved the Dagmars in. We felt like they were in a better location. Um, and we had to feel the them. bullets. Yeah, they were further out, were they? Yeah, they were more out here. Okay. And so they had a an overrider bar that went right here, and we wanted to get rid of that. And I felt like it needed them on there because the back has, you know, a jet has so much going on there. And if, I felt like this was the nose. It had to be kind of protruding out, giving it some more length. And, and we had to balance the car. The, the grill's um, taking that shape as well? Yes. It's yes. coming forward? Yes. Wow. The grill's stock other than we plated it. <laughs> wow, absolutely beautiful. Pretty everything we felt like was just adding to the car and, and was fit the flow of what would the language the car kind of speaks okay well before we move up into the engine bay let's have a look at the front end under here at their arms yeah. what did you use this is all uh roadster shop and they do a wonderful job most of all of this is just the way you get it other than we went in and fine-tuned and and just kind of made it pretty you know cleaned up edges and did things that uh, and there's custom panels here yes, as well. Yes, we built all see. the filler. It's got intercoolers. When you look inside there on the wheel wheel, you see a grill. I don't know if you can see it or not. 
it's on the the intercoolers are right here in the back. Yeah, the camera can pick it up. Okay. Um, and then you've covered that up by the custom panel. Yes. Wow. We did all the wheel wells and just closing things out, uh, just kind of giving it a flow. It's just, it's really just in a feel and an expression of, of kind of the cars we build. It's beautiful, Steve. We can see some of the engine from under there, but here it is. Can we lift the hood up a little, a little bit more? Uh, that's about it. That's all right. I'll turn the light on. All right, so come on in here. A lot of custom work. Loving the pinstriping here that is sticking out and looking absolutely just immaculate. Wow. We felt like this was sort of the same body language that the rest of the car was doing, and we wanted to cover up a lot of parts. Um, we built inserts for the hood. We uh, and just kind of wanted to close out stuff. It's an LS3, but we wanted to use a stock valve cover, so we use those as coil packs, covers. I love it. It does not look like an LS3. No. <laughs> wow. But like I said, we like colors. We we look at cars as, as art. We're more from the art side than we are anything else I think Alan and I it is because I don't see this the pinstriping is the orange that's coming out yeah um, I really wanted it to interiors. grab you yeah. I call it uh, oh can't remember I, yeah. I uh, that's why I used the, the light silver in the centers and stuff I knew the engine would pop and you know I, I'm not a big cover person for the engine but I uh, I try to make it the focal point so you know I just I get excited about how I can make the how I can accent things with color um, you've done this so well because the color continues on that beautiful thin striping yes. is not only continuing here where it's so easily accessible but inside the engine bay we can see that fine line all the way up the firewall as well and not only that, the panel and fab work inside here, it's like you said, there is a lot of mimic here from the outside body lines of the car. We got fans in the back here where these openings are that suck air. You know, this is a big oven when you shut the hood, so we have to be able to figure out how to get air to travel and get out of here. Wow. Let me turn this light off. Let's go have a look at those famous body lines, those beautiful body lines that makes this car. Any work? Did you sharpen the body lines or did you add or separate anything? Well, all the, this spear is shorter. There's an imaginary line on the hood panels that come down. Okay, can we close this at all? So we can let it down yeah. a little bit. This line coming across here goes across the back. These lines almost intersect. We lengthen this line. We felt like it looked like it, they stopped it here. We felt like it just needed to be continued. It's like everything is going towards the back. We wanted to add more to the front to balance the car out. And the top was the same originally. It stopped, but... Yes, we, we filled the cow in. It would have had fence and stuff in it. We smoothed all of that out. And then all these inserts we made. So we basically rebuilt the hood. Um, it more or less looks like what they would have done a few years later. We raised the wheel opening. That's why we had to make the trim smaller. Uh, to keep the center line, there was no way that the other trim was three inches wide, which is more than two times bigger than that. But I also felt like the car was too heavy looking in the front. I'm, I'm loving this part of the car, Steve, um, and I was wondering what you had done to it, but because yeah. you've, you've, you've sort it's kind of flattened it? No, we raised it up and we opened the back up more. Uh, but it's giving it a... Um, it lets ab, you see ab, more of the wheel. Yes. Slow. Yes, and, and, and I like that. I like that a lot. It's making me feel like it's giving it a very fast motion. Yes, it feels lighter to me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Wow. You know, like you know, you can see these panels we built all all the bottom panels we we made around the bumper and all that. They have that stuff. We extended parts and did things to them. 
Well, you know, Steve, one of the things that I said to David when we were in, sitting inside there, I looked around and I said, well-deserved award. Slonica is a very prestigious award, and this has been very well-deserved because now that I sat in the car and I'm looking at the interiors and I'm seeing it, it's not crazily modern, yeah. and it kind of makes you think that this could have been made in 59. That's exactly what we wanted. This could have been made. Yeah. Air conditioning, power windows, they weren't far off. There were cars and European cars that already had that. Yeah, we, we really, really, really feel like we're an, an extension of, we hope and pray that maybe of the designers and their mindset. That's, you know. Not to take too much away from the actual no. beauty, classic beauty. We really don't want to take anything away. All we're trying to do is emphasize, like I said, what they were doing. That maybe they they that they just couldn't get on across everybody. I don't know how to explain that, but you know, I just know there's. It's like when you just can't get an owner to go for something. You know, sometimes it just gets left on the table. Yeah. And we felt like that's kind of what happened on these cars. That you know the the. The back is so beautiful. The front, the whole car is, but the whole car is. But we're moving down. I'll raise this hood back up. Yep. I should have asked David, but I'll ask you. Tell me about Bespoke. Where did that come about from? That was Alan. And I really wanted to do that. He come up with all kinds of names, but it goes back to we we hands-on for years on this car we felt like we knew it pretty good and we we tried to explain to him what it all meant and that it's a hand-built to his uh, liking specifications i'm so glad you brought out that term now tell me about hand-built for starters before that how many people worked on this car mostly me and alan and okay. we had other people there's people been coming through the shop and i feel like every one of them brought a brought something but I think you know it's it's tough to do what we do and I think especially as much as we tend to drag them out and I, and that's not by design like I said there's so many factors in a car builder's life that family money customers money I mean I couldn't I couldn't ever explain every car is different too and even the creative process is, is a tough one to put your finger on uh, you well, know. it's extra tough when you want to hand build the entire thing. Yeah, and then, and then when you're you're really, I feel like I only have one bullet in a gun every every <laughs> car. So you really want to do the best you can, and they just want to get the car done. And I and I totally appreciate that and understand that. But I know if they'll just please be patient with us, that it'll 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 be it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Yeah. Where is something here on the build that you? hand built and you chose not to use modern machining or technology well this top sphere alan we started with a two by two piece of aluminum the, the front of this is the same size as stock but the back is twice as big yes and it is we we did you know we, we we felt like cadillac does that in the same years we felt like that was a gm thing and you know so we're using the same language but it didn't this is not what it would have been on this car. When you look in the rear view mirror, if you're sitting in it, it just looks like they're just sticking out way too far. Wow. Because I'm not used to cars like that. And you hand, with, this was all hand? Metal work. file and a, and a grinder. We made, Metal file and a grinder. Yeah. Wow. And, and uh, Alan worked on that thing forever. I would I did the TIG welding and, and some of the stuff, but we would, you know, like we right here, we would make this piece and make it fit. And then this piece would just... We don't, we're pencil and paper guys, <laughs> so it's pretty hard for me to describe, and I, and I lack of words, I think Alan would have done a better job, but it's easier, I think both of us decided that it's easier for us just to do it than try to explain it to somebody. Now some of this other stuff, we just kind of went off that, this would have been three or four pieces, and so Evod built this piece for us. Wow. Or As a one I piece can't. now? Yes. Okay. I think I, you know maybe I, maybe it was greenings. I, I I get confused sometimes. They they built these. Um, Jonathan Grosby helped out as well with the car. He helped me with the painting part of. Oh, with the painting. Okay. Yes. I'd never sh shot this paint, and so <laughs> I uh, bless his heart. I mean, he told me everything he knew to try to help me, and it, and it I did it exactly the way he said. <laughs> and I still needed more help because. I'm a slow learner, but this tail light, 
This is to match the extension of it, but this inside here is the stock tail light. This is how much bigger this is than that, but to make it match the car, I think in the assembly of the car, they would have just made it drop down so it fit every car if they were a little bit different. We wanted it to fit this car, so there's no, there's really not any part on this car that'll fit any stock car hard. Again, again, this is something that could have been made, sorry, in 59. Yes, yeah. Is if, if, if the, they, they, they if the built, money, if they could have made custom cars, yeah. obviously. If they could have got a price point that would have worked for that. Yeah. But they knew what... And, and the fact that you've hand-built this, there's not much machining, anything involved, besides the LS motor, everybody. Don't comment on that. <laughs> the LS motor might not have been there, but there's all the handwork. It's it's, it's amazing. Well, it's, it's a, it was a, it's a lot of both. You know, Dave... He's a business guy. Yeah. So when we were taking a lot of time doing a lot of this by hand, he's like, surely there's some stuff. So we started using other people. You know, like I said, Evo did the steering wheel. Uh, the Greenings did the bezel. The only thing was when we got, when I, we were going to put a bigger tail light, but then I felt like it just, other than, I don't know a nice way to put it, it just been bug-eyed. Yeah. It would be too big. No, this is perfect. When it's they designed enough. that, they knew what size that tail light needed to be. So I had to come up with this filler. I mean, but that's kind of what we do. You know, I don't know. It's the bumpers are all narrowed. This trim we made, they had a piece of trim, but no. none, of, none of it really, you know, they, they just make it so loosely that that they have to make it where they can, you know, it's moving while they're putting it together in 59. They don't, they don't get the benefit of what we get of sitting here and taking a week to put a bumper on or these panels on. Absolutely. Let's go here in the undercarriage. I mean, for starters, I'm loving the pinstriping that's happening here. <laughs> we do that on a lot of cars. We just feel like it's got to have some striping if it's a hot Is rod. Is that a bit of a signature for you, Steve? I think it has become that. We've had a lot of really nice cars. That so I've if done I that. was to see that anywhere, I'll know it's your car? Well, I don't. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe there'll be other cars. But Did you do that yourself? No, no. I got a, a, a fireman oh. that's, that has studied and worked with a, a really good friend of mine that's passed away now, but he, uh, Ron Myers, now this is Josh Hayden, has kind of took the torch and he's really, really Josh Hayden. He's from Oklahoma, or he's from Blanchard. Yeah. Uh, this is not his full time job, but it's his passion. I well, think. Well, he does a great job. Yeah, he it's does. beautiful and it complements We just let him car. run. I just said, here's the colors I want to put on there. <laughs> and, uh, wow, okay. I just feel like. It, you know, I feel like when you pick a color for cars, it's like naming a child. So, you know, all of this stuff, this is the personality I felt like this car needed. Absolutely. We can see that the, you've got the exhaust here all custom yes. as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can actually show you that. There it is there. Wow. We got resonators, so it's got a really nice rumble, but it, it won't get real loud when you get on it. Uh, wow. And like I said, I call that cinnamon. I just felt like that would really show up. So I, you know. And, and it just it needed to show up. You there's know? like it's... five colors on the bottom of the car. This silver is different than the silver on the valve covers. Because I, it's just. And and that's why we can see it because then it contrasts and bounces off yes. the other colors. I'm a real, I really, I, I, I think I'm a lot simpler person, but I've also felt like. That it, what have you felt like? <laughs> I think it's. I, I, I think I've learned to be more comfortable with, with expressing what I what I think I wanted to, to feel like. I guess you're a more visual person. Yes, I, I. You know, I think my dad and Alan would probably say this about his parents. Kind of wondered about us because we're more colors and textures and feel than most guys. I think. But okay. I think that's. I don't think that's a weird deal. I think it's. We're taking what they designed and uh, just, you know, obviously they didn't offer this color. Yeah. And, it, and we were thinking, man, we put this color in this thing, it'll change the whole personality. So what was your color. thought process behind the color? It will, I mean, David told you he wanted some sort of green. And in many ways, this is and is not green. No. I don't know exactly what color I'm looking at. It's very Adventuring different. Adventuring green is what it's called. It's a Porsche color. Say it again. Adventuring. Adventuring green. green. Okay. But it's a color they've had for a lot of years. And 
it's, he says it's a really hard car color to get on a car. It's kind of like special order. But some cars, you know, I've seen these cars with colors close to this, and it's just the right color. But it's not this color. This car is actually prettier in the sunlight. Because it's such a big car. Yes. It's and a it, big well, car. It's not just that. It's a... Uh, it's a color, it's got a lot of pearls so it flops. The green in it is the pearls, so it gets a lot of dark and light tones in it. Because it's called layers? Yes, that's what, yeah, no, well, no, just the way the color's built. The color's just the built, pearls. but I'm just saying, like, even um, because there's layers here where the shadows yes, fall. Yes, yes, but the color does that anyway. The color does that anyway it's on like, the side. It, it adds on to the elements. Yes. Wow. Whenever you see this car in the sunlight, the roof's darker than the sides is. The direct light is darker, which is... Because it's picking up the sky, it's it's hard to explain. You know it. No, I. It's <laughs> creative mind, uh, Steve Cook. Everybody, you know, we're just trying to get right in there. And you're doing an absolute awesome job and letting us know. And I know what you mean because well, I can do. You can do things with paint. Yes. I can never do any other way. Paint. You know the the colors and the manufacturers and and the people that design it. I don't know anything about, but. That's a world that I love to experiment in. Because in a way, whatever color and paint that's there and in front of you, and you see it every day like you would in a car, it, you know, it comes down to the mood colors and but, it connects with your soul on how like you feel you it. like you said, I told you that mine's a wonderful thing. Yes. A lot of this stuff, you can buy, I've seen this color. I've seen it on a 60s Porsche. We've had guys in our shop that do what we were talking about, so we we're all brainstorming, talking about it, and you can almost picture this car that color. But that's hard to get through somebody why you want it that color. So even when I shot test panels, I do it on motorcycle tanks so they get the radius in it. That really doesn't do it. They almost, it comes back to the point where I, I've really struggled, I think, in most of my life, but I think that you have to finally get to the point where they came to me for a reason. You gotta let me show you what I'm talking about, and that's Dave did that. So, love it. absolutely love that. It it tells a lot uh, to us and the viewers about yourself and how your mind works and how you are very patient. You don't just do anything just for the sake of it. No. There's a reason. There's a lot of thought that goes into that. Yeah. And if it doesn't mesh well, and if it's not right up this there, this is our what legacy. Thinking, here. This is this is everything we're about. So that's it, isn't it? You know, we have to take it serious. And absolutely. And we're not. We don't really want to be trendy. We'd love to be the guy that sets the trends, not follow the trend. <laughs> I love that. Be the guy that sets it, not follows it. Steve, talk to me about the wheels. The wheels are a, a Sam Foose design, and he had these on his car, and we asked Gil was in the same car club as him. So when we did them for the 56 Clemens, we asked him and he said, you gotta change them. So we put, I think it was less openings, so they're a little bit bigger. And then Chip said when he seen it, and I brushed the sides of it, he really, really liked that. But his dad would have thought that was pretty cool. You brushed the crime? The sides of the spokes brushed. Oh, yes, I can I, see. I, 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 th I thought you meant the wall, but no, no it's... No, just, it oh, makes yes. it a little bit more three-dimensional. Oh, yes, it does. I, then, I do like brushed crime. And then the hubcap center is a different gray. It's not the color of the car, but it's it's a variation. Uh, that's why I said a lot of these colors are just different colors, but they work well together. Wow. That color works better flat than any color I can think of. Uh, the color on the seal plate is a different color than the wheel centers. There's a lot. I think I had a even, real, so this color is the same as that color. On the seal plate On here. the seal plates. Okay. The insert. And sometimes when you just look at this, you think the insert is the same color. Love it. So much of a contrast here. There's so Very many creative. things that I, I kind of wanted to do, but I we, we decided... Well, Steve, what was the one thing you wanted to do and they didn't let you do it out of your gonna, own shop? <laughs> I was going to brush this. Okay. It w I wanted to get it down to nickel, but I was concerned that, A, I was just going to end up with something that was inconsistent because I, I wasn't real sure how much chrome was on there. But it's also, right now it's just painted. No, well, no, brush this chrome part. The, the, you did brush it? No, no, it's, but, it's just no. This is just paint. Oh, that's a normal and paint. This is just chrome. Okay. I wanted to go in here and make this down to the nickel because the oh, nickels okay. are a real warm color, and it real. It's just it's go gorgeous. I, I did a car with nickel plating, and that's the car that won the Riddler. Yep. But. Jose, the cromer at Ogden, said, 
go for it. He felt like the whole car would have been cool nickel. But sometimes you got to think, you got to know when to stop. You got to know when to stop. Gil used to tell me that a car's got to know what it is. So that's, I, you know, you, you think of things that you've talked to people a lot when you talk to these owners, and every one of them gave me so much that, uh, you know, if, if I could write, I could write a book probably, but <laughs> you not should. that guy. <laughs> but they, they, these people invest so much time and effort into these things and into me. That's the only reason I'm So when they say something, you know, and uh, in many ways on the channel, you guys, this is my journey. In many ways, I'm similar as well. So if somebody, especially in this world, in this industry, say something, I try to take that on board. And I think it's a good lesson for everybody in life to do that, that if someone's out there and they know what they're doing, it's sometimes nice to stay quiet and take on yes. that advice. Yes. And yourself here, you've got an amazing shop. The reputation speaks for itself. Even though you wanted to do something, you, when you hear something, it's not like, oh, I know what I'm doing because I've been doing this. I'm Steve Cook. It's you still listen to your peers. Yeah, and I still listen to the voice in my head. And the voice I didn't want to just do it because. Steve, you are an individual. You're quite an individual, actually, because I'm so happy I got you here on my channel and just to find out more about you and how your mind works, especially when it comes to building such great cars. Thank you. I You're don't know welcome. what to say. You don't know what to say, but you can tell me about the undercarriage. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a, just basically a roaster shop chassis. They do a wonderful job. We did some tweaking and stuff, and we felt, but man, those guys, you know, they got it pretty dialed in. And, uh, you know, years ago, I, we used to modify a lot of frames and everything, and I tell people, just go that route because they, they've they went to the School of Hard Knocks. They got all the equipment, the best people. Uh, you just can't go wrong. Everything is just bolt-on ready. Yes. But yeah. these panels did not come from the roaster no, shop. No, we built those panels. You built these panels. All of this, to, you know, we put a pinstripe. You can't see most of it. This pinstriping, look yes. at that. Honestly, this is the detail and amount of work that goes into these high-end cars, everybody. And that's why I like to bring it in and show you that it's not just the exterior that you see, but the yeah. amount of work and effort that goes on to the undercarriage. Something that probably 80% of people would not have noticed. Yeah. I mean, we took the pinch weld off of the rocker right here. You know, this used to be a, just a pinch where the outer skin went to the inner floor pan. Right. So we got rid of all of that. And then, you know, had to change a lot of stuff to make all that work. And we brought the color of the interior out onto the door jams. Now, you have to tell me about that because I did That's see that. That's something I do a lot. Uh, some colors you don't notice as much, yeah. but this one... It, but the texture. A, tell me about the texture of the paint, especially the, over here. Well, we just tried to make it somewhat match. It's kind of interesting because you're almost putting flaws in it to make it match the leather. I, you know, Flaws in it, okay. Yeah, the, the texture. You know, this, this leather, Gabe gets it really tight, but it's just got... I don't know, embossed feeling or something to it. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it real close, you can see it. And so you just want it to kind of flow to be seamless from leather, leather to paint. Because it looks like leather. It, yeah. It's so it's so hard to think that okay, that's paint, but you really have to get up close because from a distance you think that over there, over the door hinges and everything, it's all leather. Yeah, and you know we spent who knows how many hours getting all, all the wiring going to these doors is in that bottom hinge right there. We. Mill it out, and then we put a panel over it. We so there's you don't see any wires coming out. Wow, okay. You know, I you got to be a little bit of an artist, a little bit of a risk. Well, you're definitely an artist, so a very creative artist at that. This is immaculate. What's next coming out of your shop? Well, we got a C10 pickup, uh, 67. Okay, 67. Yeah, that we've been working on basically as long as we've been working on this car. And trucks are, you know, we, we like to go from one thing to another. We, we, you know, we get a lot of ideas from a lot of different things. When Dave was looking at the interior, we showed him the, the Jaguar with this interior in it. And, you know, we changed it, but basically this was that color. Uh, so is the C10 going to be a little bit like their Impala? A C10 truck is next, coming from Steve Cook Creations, a 67 C10 nonetheless. 
It's going to be finished hopefully next year sometime. Yeah. So that means that when I'm back in Tulsa, hopefully this year, I will have to come to the shop. That'll work. And show you guys exactly where their creativity comes from. Now, I like debuting cars. I don't leak a lot of things out. I might be able to see the C10. You might have to wait. Maybe. But we'll you'll see. get to see the shop hopefully. Yeah. We've already they've already had some feature pictures. Okay. This guy was a little bit easier than some of them. He, he didn't you know whatever we want to do so we've let a few pictures out okay okay well i'm excited i appreciate your time i've held you up long enough okay <laughs> thank you so much thank